So we are over a decade into this social media revolution. All of this stuff happening all at once is pretty overwhelming. But we've also seen some old things rehashed as new. Now, in the case of carbonation, formerly known as melanation, they think they're new, they think they've discovered something, but we've seen this movie before with different actors. The major difference here is that carbonation spread online with young, attractive black people. That's a really hot demographic now, by the way. Now, Carbonation is a polygamous group focused around charismatic leader, Eligio Bishop. Bishop goes by many names. He's also known as Three God. He's commonly known as Nature Boy. You'll probably see that hashtag. We'll call him Bishop because that's what his arrest record says. Carbonation is a new age naturalist group that believes in veganism, in nudity, and in mentalism, that we can control the world with our mind. Ever notice that new age cult leaders always throw nudity in there? They just put it in and nudity, right? Yeah, sure, we believe in nudity. It's like next to godliness. Nudity for ugly people? No, 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 no. Just nudity for attractive young women. Somebody write this down. This man has a new gospel. He's come up with something new. Eligio Bishop should have sex with everybody. Wow, revolutionary. Etch it in stone for posterity. Now, obviously the ladies of Carbonation were not watching any of my videos because if they were, these girls would have known that you never get trapped in a harem. These poor girls, his existing pride, the people who are left, he calls them their pride, they're in a harem, broke the first rule of girl life, don't get trapped in a harem. Ladies, if you find yourself trapped in a harem, if you ever look around and say, oh no, there are a lot of women to one men, and if we try to leave, he beats us. You're probably in a harem. Grab your coat and leave. Just, all right, I'm gonna head out now. But yeah, if you're in a harem, your choices were bad. But in general, I'm just teasing. Also, carbonation is completely scandalous. Not only do they believe that Bishop is God, hence the name Three God, he has many wives. He puts on these elaborate shows for his Instagram Live. He makes them fight on the beach. He gets physical. He seems to want to humiliate them for the entertainment of strangers. And this was all before he was arrested for sex crimes. I will be going into some of that scandalous stuff here, but I will be mainly focusing on what they believe, what was the evolution of their group from social media chat room to being booted out of numerous, numerous Central American countries. Oh, plus Hawaii. I'll go into how Carbon Nation compares to other groups, other religious movements, new religious movements, many of whom have turned into cults. I will discuss how Carbonation went from a music video production company based on black empowerment to a sex cult based on degradation and humiliation. Who are they humiliating? Surprise, surprise, black people. I thought we were empowering black people. Yeah, until it's time to humiliate them. How Three God went from worshiping the black woman to debasing her. Bishop's teachings descended. They descended into wickedness, really, into really nihilistic stuff. What he's coming out with now is pretty nasty, pretty nihilistic, dark, really dark. It's a fall from grace because they had the potential to do good things and help the community, but because of narcissism and pride and lust, they have destroyed themselves. Particularly Bishop has completely destroyed all of his credibility. Now, luckily, Eligio Bishop was stopped before he could take his violence any further. We see him hitting women, we see him hitting his followers, we see sadistic stuff from him. And Oftentimes when you see this kind of sadistic stuff from cult leaders early on, they kind of grow and morph into really violent, violent groups. So his wives are much safer with him in prison right now. Carbon Nation, formerly Melanation, the cult of Eligio Bishop is very well documented. We have stories from Manson, but we have hundreds, if not thousands of hours of video directly from Carbon Nation. Bishop has a YouTube, no need to subscribe. He also streamed on Instagram and on Facebook, and so did his followers. On top of all of that, there's a group of interested parties who have interviews with some of his followers. There are news programs or documentaries. Former members have come out. They have their own YouTubes. They have discussed what went on with them. This happens over many different 
social media platforms too, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, streaming platforms. Uh, there's a fandom. There's a carbonation fandom that has built up. If you don't know what a fandom is, it's a fan group that is heavily invested in a certain topic. Check out my interviews with Monia Ali to understand more about fandom. There seem to be a number of different types of people in this fandom. Many of these are trolls. They leave the funniest comments on the Instagram Live. I'm not even gonna lie. Some of these troll comments are really the best and sometimes the truth hurts, so there it is. There are fans who are out there for the message, who believe in what Bishop has to say, but they don't really support Bishop because he's kind of narcissistic and cruel. But sometimes some of his sermons aren't bad, so there are those people. And then there's a third group who are the good people, if I could put this the best way possible, the easiest way possible. There's a third group of people who seem to not be able to look away from what's happening. They seem to want to help followers. They often plead with followers to get out and offer them resources. For these people, I imagine carbonation must be like watching a train wreck. When somebody is yelling at the conductor, please just hit the brake and the conductor doesn't hit the brake. So we watch the full train wreck and these are the people who seem to not be able to look away. The research for this Carbon Nation video has been borderline overwhelming. Borderline overwhelming. Why do I say that? I was not physically able to watch every bit of video. There's thousands of hours out there. I wasn't even able to find every bit of video. My focus was specifically on Carbon Nation's teachings and their group dynamics. That's kind of what we cover on this channel. And of course, how they compare to other cults because they're not the first and they won't be the last, unfortunately. With the particular audience they had and the time they came about, it kind of makes them unique. Like Hollywood says it all the time. Give me the same movie, but different. Such is Carbon Nation. Okay, so the timeline. In 2015, Bishop calls himself a light worker here to empower the black female. In 2022, Bishop proudly states that he's a pimp, brags about being a pimp, exploiting not just black women, but his children's mothers. Not really empowering black females here. He gives one of the most evil sermons I have ever heard. I suggest everyone listen to it because we kind of have to be aware of the mind games that these psychopaths are playing on us. And he comes right out and says it in his video, The Psychology of a Pimp. He comes right out and says how he breaks these women down. And he breaks these women down like you would break down a dog or in olden times how they would break down slaves. Pretty gross. It's pretty gross. But he admits to it. It's a complete Icarus tale in little over seven years. So I kind of like the speed of the modern age. I like resolution to my tragedies. I can't stand a movie that just is there to set up for a sequel. I kind of want to see beginning, middle, and end. And I want to see it over my phone and I want to see it right now. Plus commentary. The fandom offers commentary on carbonation. So that's good and that's really entertaining. What if Bishop gets out of prison and this whole first part of carbonation is just the villain's origin story? That's so modern America. Such a thing that would happen now. April, 2022. Bishop was arrested, uh, taken into custody for rape and revenge porn and false imprisonment, where, surprise, surprise, from prison, he continues to give ignorant, misogynistic sermons. To this very day, he is in prison giving these sermons. His remaining wives, he calls them his pride, stand by him, by the way. There's a hashtag to free him, but there's so many threes in it, like who can even remember? I'm not learning a new language to hear about this hashtag, okay? I barely even care as is. I'm not gonna learn how to retype on my phone. And then you gotta hit shift and I, who is doing this? You make this accessible. Make this accessible if you want the public's help. Honestly, prior to Bishop declaring himself God, which is pretty standard fare for these cult leaders, Carbon Nation was not much different than many of the new age religions that are out there right now. Many of which you can find on YouTube. They're still there. What is the difference? Well, he took it off of YouTube. He took it off the online and said, you know what? I want to rule these people with an actual fist, not just a digital fist. And how many, how many of these videos have we gone through where people declare themselves God because they get a little following? There's Love is One, there's Heaven's Gate, Father Divine, much bigger following. So yeah, par for the course. Some people just cannot resist declaring themselves God. They just, they, they're, they're waiting for it. They're waiting for that YouTube number or the Twitter number to hit X many thousands. And they're gonna be like, you know what? I'm Jesus. 
Jesus, really. This isn't even the first YouTube new age cult that we have covered on this channel, which is not an old channel, in which the leader has declared themselves God. Whatever. It's fine. People are just going to do it. Carbonation is a new religious movement, and new religious movements have a way of descending into cults. Some don't. Some really don't. New religious movements come in all types. There's Christian, there's Buddhist, there's Islam, there's New Age, there's even yoga. How long does it take before a new religious movement becomes a standard religion? Happened with the Mormons. It happened with the Mormons. So just because something is a new religious movement doesn't mean its followers are crazy or stupid. Just give it some time, see how it all flushes out. Now, I'm not so sure we're going to get that answer with carbonation because the leader is in prison, basically being a sex creep. So maybe we won't get that whole long timeline that the Mormons had. You know what? Half of these established religions were founded by sex creeps too, but that was a long time ago. And the definition of sex creep has changed. Now, if you want to get away with that stuff, you got to become a priest. Carbonation was formerly called Melanation. It was founded by Eligio Bishop around 2015, 2016. Eligio is a handsome and charismatic man. He's definitely good looking. You can't deny that. Originally from Georgia. He seems to have found YouTube around 2015 or started his page around 2015 when YouTube was still good. There wasn't really any censorship. You could find four hour videos about the most ridiculous things, the most pseudoscientific things, ancient astronauts, flat earth, the good stuff, the stuff we all came for. And now what? Can't even start a cult on YouTube anymore. Anyway, there was a lull on YouTube, as we all remember, after the world didn't end in 2012. Do you remember that? Because everyone was going around, the world's going to end, the world's going to end, this, 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 and that. Didn't end, and it kind of got a little sad for a minute. But then it came back with new crazy. So that's where we pick up with Bishop. His very first YouTube video that I could find was called Measuring Body Voltage. You'll notice he replaces the E's with threes. It's <sighs> tedious. It's tedious. We'll leave it at that. Imagine relearning how to type so you can show people that you're different. Language in general is a very effective means of manipulation because we think in language. Uh, it forms our internal mental map. The map we have of the world is kind of formed by language. Like our house is built of wood or stone, our mental map is formed by language. If someone can make you use a different language, they can help rearrange your internal mental map. They really get in your head like that. So language really matters. Groups will adopt a shared language to, for cohesion. So they become closer by using a shared language, a shared vocabulary to see who's in the group and who's not in the group. And people not in the group will be so annoyed by their vocabulary that they'll distance themselves even further. And so there we go. Now the group draws even closer because they were so annoying to others such as Bishop, such as Carbon Nation. Nature Boy currently has about 92,000 subs on YouTube. His early videos focus on energy, frequency, vibrations. These themes come up a lot. They come up a lot in new age talking points. His first video was shot in New York City. He performs an electrical current test where he measures the voltage going through his body. The same test will come back in later videos. It comes up a lot. Have you ever seen the Scientology Thetan test? It's goofy. You put your hands on these cups and they try to measure how many thetans are in your body. And if you question the science behind it at the first part of the tour, they don't invite you to the second part of the tour. I learned that on my first visit to a Scientology uh, church. I'm not saying this to dunk on Scientology. I'm not saying this to dunk on Carbon Nation. I'm just saying this to demonstrate how someone with a little bit of knowledge can use that knowledge as a weapon against people who don't have that knowledge because we tend to be impressed by new knowledge. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Such is Bishop with this electrical current test. They used to call these parlor tricks. If you read the old spiritual texts, they'll call these parlor tricks and we're supposed to ignore them completely. Now, some people legitimately swear by grounding, which is connecting yourself to the earth to uh, release any built up electricity within the body. Bishop has no ownership over grounding. He found it just like the rest of us found it on YouTube. On YouTube. Uh, one day. Uh, YouTube. Uh. We see Bishop repeating many of the ideas that were going around on YouTube in those early days. Frequency, quantum spirituality, the simulation. 
Simulation theory is the idea that we may be living in a simulation, like Sims, but with better graphics. The reasoning is simple. If there are more than two realities, and only one of them is real, chances are we're living in a simulated one. The idea came to the forefront about 10 years ago with Nick Bostrom, and it's been popularized by Neil deGrasse Tyson and Elon Musk. Groundbreaking, yes. But rent in the simulation is still due on the first, so don't get any ideas. Honestly, Bishop is not a stupid man. He, uh, he's uneducated, but he's not dumb. He's certainly very crafty, clever. In an early video of his, it's called like a uh, three God educates a woman because it's misogynistic because everything he does is. Bishop proudly states that he does not read books because books start in the brain. Let's see if we can pull up this clip. <laughs> the first book that actually opens up my brain is The Celestine Pharmacy. Oh yeah, 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 I, I, I see. I, I've heard of that book. I don't do books because of the simple fact I figured out what happened. Yeah. All books before I was written came from something. Where do thoughts come from? This is where I become free. Because when you think about where thoughts come from, mm -hmm. and you look at your body, mm -hmm. and you cut your hair, and you say, where's my hair come from? What is my hair? He told you that your hair is dead. It's not dead. It's dead. Mm -hmm. It's growing. Nothing dead grows. Yeah. <laughs> books start in the brain. So why would he read other people's books? He has a brain, too. Okay, let's unpack that real quick. Books do start in somebody's brain. Yeah, and then they write them down so that I, a reader, can see what is in that other person's brain. What Bishop did there was simply define written communication. It's like saying, I don't speak because the spoken word is just a thought and I have thoughts too. Yeah, but it, then it's spoken. Do you see? Do you see where, where the leap happens? His curriculum for students and followers covers five topics. We got astrology, we got biology, we got quantum physics, we've got grounding and melanin, five major topics. He also gives praise to Egyptology as it relates to quantum physics. You're at home like, what is his definition of quantum physics exactly? And that's a dumb question. You asked a dumb question because in new age reasoning, quantum physics is an answer in and of itself. It's a catch all term for like, you know, man, like quantum physics, man. I love the modern age. Scientists barely know what quantum physics is and they don't know what it does or the implications of it either. There's a whole field trying to figure out what quantum physics is. It's fascinating and we should all look into it and we should all dedicate the rest of our lives and sacrifice all of our relationships just to understand a little bit more about it. But Elysio Bishop is not the person to teach us quantum physics. <laughs> he convinced all these people that he could teach them quantum physics. Like what? No. I hate to burst your bubble, but there is no reputable physics department in the United States that makes its doctoral students fight on a beach for the gram. Not a one. Now, all kidding aside, just because Bishop talked about a subject doesn't mean the subject is nonsense. It's These subjects are worth studying, just not under Bishop. If you master these subjects, you will be invited to stay in countries. They're going to want your brain as part of their nation. You will not be run out of countries, okay? So that's like the litmus test as to whether you are actually studying science, whether you are run out of these countries, or whether you are invited in. Learning these subjects is going to be mostly math and frustration. Bishop, not the type to embrace math or frustration. Prior to YouTube, he worked as an exotic dancer and an adult performer, including participating in same-sex scenes. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not at all. Elysio Bishop seems to be a very sexual man. In his lectures, his penis comes up quite a lot. It's like how Bernie is always railing against the billionaire class and how we have to take care of working class Americans. It's like, okay, Bernie, we get it. You care about working class Americans. You mention it all the time. Such is Eligio Bishop with his penis. We saw this in Rock Therio. Rock Therio, who's a Canadian cult leader, was obsessed over his penis. How big it was. He had to show everybody all the time. I don't know why this is. Does Bishop use his penis to seduce female followers and gain sexual power over them? Does the big penis feed his confidence and his ego 
and he can be more charismatic because he has the confidence of said penis. He made a whole video talking about how the female vagina is shaped to the biggest penis that it is with part of his teachings. This is God we're talking about, so don't mock him. He does also seem to have some latent same-sex attraction that he's battling internally. If we don't live in a world that allows females to express themselves completely in freedom and, and so that we can get the most out of them collectively, then we summon the homosexual spirit. Many of his male followers have denied that there was any sort of sexual relations going on with him. We do see videos of Bishop slapping male members, humiliating them on Instagram Live because they gave him the wrong fruit. But I digress. He's at least bi. He obviously loves black women. He claimed to want to awaken the black female, if you know what I mean. Awaken, right? Awaken. Uh, yeah. Any dude that uses the phrase, the black female, is a creep. It's just personal observation. Black women, that's a fine phrase. But the black female, I can't think of a single one. Is this a female? A human female? Now, one of his followers left Bishop, left Carbonation, after she witnessed him smack one of his girlfriends and then demand that the same girlfriend perform oral sex on him. That made this follower so sick that she left. Also, we see that one of Bishop's former wives, former girlfriends is transsexual, his words, not mine. And so that we see that carbonation is progressive in this way. Anyone can get it. Anyone can get robbed. Anyone can get beaten. Gay, straight, man, woman, bi, it doesn't matter. Y'all can all get your ass beat by Bishop when he's in a bad mood. So that's good. Prior to starting Carbonation, before all of this even started, we know that Bishop was comfortable doing illegal things because he has a record. He was arrested in 2009 for forcible entry, then again in 2011 for theft and aggravated battery. Bishop trained as a barber, and he applied for a business license in 2014, but nothing seems to have come from that. Seems as though he had ambitions more than just being a barber. Which I don't know why, because a barber shop, that's a good business, you know? He's probably not going to be in a jail running a barber shop. But look, he got so ambitious, and now look where he is. Bishop was able to amass a following from his YouTube, from his Facebook, from his Instagram pages. Just kept putting out content, and people were receptive to it. And he was able to reach out through the messaging apps and actually get people to come to him. We do see the influence of new age spiritual thought on YouTube coming out in his videos, very directly. He tries them out, Bishop we see trying out all of these new ideas he gets, because he's an influencer. Keep that in mind, Eligio Bishop is an influencer. He's like a modern tentpole preacher going from town to town or video to video and seeing what plays. We see him try channeling. He does try channeling. It doesn't play. It gets very few views. He's really bad at channeling. Let's just be honest. He's not good at it. His idea of channeling is just talking in a regular voice, but adding a hashtag to it. So not really channeling. Doesn't have the gift for it. Channeling for you uninitiated is when a guru speaks on behalf of a higher level being. It channels the higher power. This could be uh, interdimensional aliens. This could be infinite intelligence. If you didn't know that, I don't know where you've been for the past 10 years. Everybody knows about channeling. Come on. You don't channel. I channeled this morning. This is common knowledge. You need to catch up. <laughs> no, there are channelers out there. There are whole pages built around uh, channeling. Um, Esther Hicks, she became famous for channeling Abraham, and she gets millions of dollars. Abraham is supposedly infinite intelligence, and Abraham speaks through her. So if you disagree with Esther Hicks, well, you're disagreeing with God, so ha. Huh? There you go. Didn't you screw up disagreeing with God? Now, channeling is not magic. Channeling is how actors are trained. They channel the character. This is method acting. Many of us could actually channel if we wanted to, because we could go to acting class and learn the technique. Anyway. Doesn't get very many views, he moves on. See, this is why we need black British cult leaders because they care about the craft. Idris Elba has a great American accent. Maybe he can have a harem. He should have a cult and a harem. Give Idris a harem. <laughs> There's thirsty women in the comments right now like, ooh, put me in Idris harem. I wanna be in Idris harem and learn the word. <laughs> 
For Bishop, however, a few years later, after this channeling, after this initial wave of YouTube copying, he's clearly watched some sad guru because he tries out this whole imam chic look. You see him, he's walking through these olive fields and then he sits on this platform in front of his followers, you know, uh, crisscross applesauce and gives the whole shwami shtick, that a whole Indian guru shtick. Now, <laughs> what really caught my attention with this um, is that he is taking a well-known YouTube chill track, like a yoga track, and he just makes it icky by using it as the soundtrack for his wannabe guru lectures or whatever. Totally ruined this track for me. I can't even do psychedelics to it anymore. I'm so mad about it. Let's just read this one comment because I can't say it any better. <laughs> Quote, y'all are the dumbest cult I have saw yet. Dumb ass scripted questions with some retard sit in Indian style. Wake the hell up. End quote. But we have to remember that Bishop, Three God, is feeding the interwebs and he's also feeding on the interwebs. He's an influencer. The slogans of the modern era are hashtags. Watch the hashtags come into play in his messaging. He jumps on hashtags. He creates his own hashtags. Melanin is one that he caught on to early. What about albinos? Do albinos count? Hush about albinos. Don't, don't question it too much. Melanin, good. Don't worry about albinos. Carbonation actually started as melanation because Eligio taught that melanin was sacred, that it empowered its holders with divine intelligence, divine powers, spirituality, magnetism, and made them exceptional. So this is why they're referred to as black supremacists, why melanation was a black supremacist group. By definition, it was black supremacists. It was teaching black supremacy. Now, melanin is an evolutionary adaptation to the sun. South Asians also have melanin-rich skin. A lot of people all over the world have melanin-rich skin. Now, one problem with any kind of racial supremacy ideology is that it's empty flattery. Remember to beware of flatterers because they want something from you. Not all flatterers. Some people are just nice, but a lot of flatterers, they want something from you. Now, Bishop, Eligio Bishop, goes out of his way to flatter the black female. I wonder what he wants from the black female. Hmm. Anyway, swindlers used flattery and tribalism to get past your threat detection radar. This is not unique to black men. This is a human trait. Swindlers of any race will take it too far. Replace black with white, you've got white supremacists. Now replace the race entirely with a nation, you've got nationalists. It's not unique, it's so basic, it's so banal. This is why Christians call Satan the great deceiver. Um, the great deceiver will take any form that gets past your personal threat detection radar, past your personal threat detection system. We don't endorse any one religion on this channel. They all have value, but the Christian concept of Satan as the great deceiver is very useful, especially in the modern era. We discussed it kind of in the shadow video with Witiko. What else is associated with the great deceiver? Pride. Pride cometh before the fall. Hubris. Hubris, in this case, we're talking about racial hubris, but hubris in general is arrogance before the gods. In ancient Greece, hubris was punished by divine retribution, and that divine retribution came in the form of the goddess Nemesis. Now, we don't fear the goddess Nemesis in the modern age. That's ancient stuff. However, we do have the concept of poetic justice. That's what we have right now. You see how Bishop talks about the divine black female. How long before he got those black females, those divine black females, those beautiful goddesses fighting on the beach for his Instagram live? Just like Manson fought his followers, Jim Jones fought his followers, same thing with Bishop, same thing with Carbon Nation. There's nothing divine about it. There's nothing unique about it. There's nothing even particularly black about it. This guy's just a jerk. In one early video, a message to Caucasian lightworkers, Bishop attempts to justify black supremacy by referencing white supremacy from back in the day. Bishop blames the evils of humanity on Caucasians, including evils to insects. I have seen no evidence that white Americans kill more insects than black Americans. He says that it is impossible for the Caucasian to live in harmony with itself, let alone the planet and the universe. He says that the Caucasian will wipe itself out through natural disasters, and this will cleanse their karma. Natural disasters don't see skin color. 
Does a tidal wave see skin color? Does an earthquake just go for the white people? I don't think so. This kind of wishful genocidal thinking is inappropriate in the modern age. It's a red flag that the group you're joining will be socially isolated. FYI. Now, melanation became carbonation when Bishop realized that white people have money to give him too. Oh, I'm sorry. He realized that white people also contain the seed of humanity. Even people born without melanin have money to give him. I'm sorry. People born without melanin have the seed of humanity. They can earn melanin in the sun. We, we may refer to this as a tan. He started accepting white members and accepting their money. Accepting white people was the beginning of the end for a bishop and carbon nation. In 2017, he traveled to Costa Rica with his followers, including a young white Canadian woman by the name of Kayla Reed. She cut off communication with her family, so they called everyone they could to find her, including the media. Now, due to the nature of our society, middle-class white women going missing got a lot more attention than working-class black women. Why is that? Why didn't the families of the black cult members make a stink like the family of Kayla Reed? Was the story of black missing girls not as compelling as the story of this young white missing girl? Were the families of these black people conditioned to think that the institutions would not help them? Was the white family, was Kayla Reed's family more scared of the black men than them? Now the Reed family was right to be scared. But ironically, Bishop's biggest mistake accepting white members was correcting for his second biggest mistake, which was not accepting white members. It put him on the map, just the way the society is. People went looking for Kayla Reed. So, uh, yeah, I'm going back to Canada, mainly because uh, I, of the safety of us, I don't want anyone getting, anybody getting hurt because I'm here. Because we had someone here else that was white that got snatched out of here before. And so, there's another thing I want to address. It seems to be that you might not be able to join me um, if you're white and you actually have a divine heart and you actually are the immune system on this planet because the immune system comes in all races, all forms, all shapes. Now, Carbonation moved to the equator to get the benefit of the sun. Previously, Bishop had considered returning to Africa but he had visited Honduras in 2016 and decided to move to Central America instead, to Costa Rica. The United States he called Babylon, and he also said there would be a lot of wars coming in Africa. He explains in the video, the aliens are living within and ruining your life, that Africa will be war-torn and Central America is safer. So in 2017, they moved to Costa Rica. And in 2018, Costa Rica asked them to leave. They had booked their tickets to leave on Spirit Airlines, but due to their belief that showers are dangerous, Spirit Airlines deemed them too musty to be on that plane, so they kicked them off. Here we see them being asked to leave the Spirit Airlines plane. And you can see the realization in some of the followers. That we can't get on the plane because we stink. He said we can't get on the plane because we stink, bro. Spirit, spirit tells us to get off the plane. We pay off. A great podcast I follow is called The Mormon and the Meth Head, and one of the hosts, his name is Aaron Woodall, introduced me to the concept of the shelf. The shelf is something that ex Mormons they have a mental shelf, and when something doesn't make any sense in the Mormon religion, they just put that on the shelf. And they're like, okay, I'll deal with this later. And then when the shelf gets too heavy and it breaks, that's when they end up leaving Mormonism. Too many contradictions will make the shelf too heavy. And when it breaks, that's when they're like, goodbye. This doesn't make any sense. They just leave the church. You can see in this video right here that this person has that realization that they're like, um, what have I done with my life? Like really, what have I done with my life where I'm being asked to leave a Spirit Airlines airplane? What choices have I made in my life that Spirit Airlines won't have me? They were also asked to leave Panama and Nicaragua after being deemed a threat to national security. They had overstayed their visas. They were driving without licenses. But honestly, it was probably because they were a cult. And after Jonestown and Guyana, what Latin American nation even wants to deal with that? Plus with the media... Look, I'm just gonna say it. Americans of all races need to stop bothering other people with our eat, pray, love bullshit. But that's another video.
Now, Carbonation lived off the PPP loans and credit cards of the followers. His ex-wife Velvet says that she gave her college fund to the group. Followers said that he also took their passports. Dropping an interview with Pice soon, Pice says that it was the female followers that Nature Boy liked that had their passports taken. His passport was never taken. Now, Nature Boy doesn't sell products. He even condemned Dr. Sebi for selling product, saying that nature is free and the body self heals. So where does he get off charging money for his product? And let me just explain why this is ridiculous. Any comfort we have comes from our ancestors using man hours and intelligence to manipulate nature. Have you ever seen early fruit? You can't eat this stuff. Look, I don't know if Dr. Sebi was a snake oil salesman or not, but what Bishop said about him makes absolutely no sense. He later made an apology video to Dr. Sebi. He didn't want to trash talk them. Now, publicly, Carbon Nation supports itself off of their music videos. So we see in 2017, February 2017, the first track I can find is called Mama. It was featuring Azul. It has a drawing with uh, naked women, black naked women. He loved black naked women. Who doesn't? But you say, Maya, didn't Manson also produce music? Why, yes, he did. Although Manson's music wasn't very good. It was mid-range at best. Carbonation has some good songs, but not until much later. Most of their stuff is forgettable, much like Manson's music. Mark my words, if they had one good album, one good album, the public wouldn't care about any of this. They wouldn't. Bishop, if you even look at Elijah Bishop, you'll see that he looks like a no-talent R. Kelly. The resemblance is uncanny, but he doesn't have the talent of R. Kelly, so. Jared Leto is also producing music right now, trying to get his cult off the ground. Music, for some reason, is married to human spirituality. It does have the ability to take us to a transcendent plane. Now, in 2020, the Carbon Nation members were arrested in Hawaii for violating quarantine. Bishop had agreed to the two-week quarantine period that they forced in Hawaii, but he left his apartment to pet a sea turtle. So they arrested them all. Bishop said he didn't realize that the Hawaiians were serious about their quarantine. They weren't that he didn't realize that they were that serious about COVID. Carbon Nation had wanted to settle in Hawaii, but the natives were hostile. Remember this same thing happened to Love Has One. <laughs> the natives were just like, you know what? It's COVID and we're not dealing with you. Just just go away. I'm sure they want to say it all the time, but they have an excuse now. It's COVID. Just just get out of here. Just stop it. Go. So Carbon Nation ended up settling in an Atlanta suburb. The crew became smaller and smaller and Bishop became more and more controlling and abusive. Bishop was arrested in 2022 of this year. He still has four wives who visit and support him. He calls them his pride. He has a few other followers. I'm not gonna he still has four wives who visit and support him. He calls them his pride. He has a few other followers. I'm not gonna name any names in case any of these people want to reform their lives. They've got YouTube pages and they keep posting these things. Bishop to this day posts sermons from prison. Well, now that you've got the rundown, how do they rate? How do they stack up against other cults? Well, beliefs. Let's start with beliefs. Carbonation has a worldview based on new age beliefs, based on anti-establishment ideas and natural living. Bishop actually seems to have an answer for everything. No matter what you ask him, no matter what the subject is, he knows all about it. He speaks on everything so confidently, with such confidence. These effective cult leaders are great speakers. Like they don't stutter, the tone of their voice is very pleasant, they're good to look at, that gets people in a trance-like state. And then they can just, they can just fall into this word salad that they make. It doesn't have to make any sense, but it's a beautiful lull. They just lull them into this trance with this word salad that they keep saying. I don't wanna take away from Bishop, many of his speeches do show a clear philosophy and they are organized by topic. Now, this is the evolution of a cult leader. Remember, Heaven's Gates videos were long. They were general. They were kind of vague. This isn't the case for the new influencer cult leader. The branding is different. The marketing is different. They have to keep pace with YouTube. We see these really interesting thumbnails. We see things that are, you know, 10 minutes or so. Some of them are longer, but some are very short and easy to digest. Carbonation believe that people should live with nature, that we are receiving signals from the solar system through the stars, just magically into our brains. That's why we don't need to know how to read, duh, because the star is gonna put it in our brain. Never read again, wait for the star to tell you, especially when you're studying for exams. 
Carbonation, teachers of the modern Western world, is Babylon, and we must free ourselves from it. This seems to have gone away towards the end when they had to move back stateside, when they had to move back to Atlanta, when he desires um, to gain power within the system of Babylon. Was this Bishop's plan the whole time? Did he always want to be powerful in Babylon, or has he become corrupted? He talks about breaking a woman like... Um, Slave masters used to talk about breaking slaves, and he knows about it because he has mentioned the letter of Willie Lynch many times. So he knows exactly what he's doing. This isn't, oh, I made a mistake. No, he knows what he's doing and what he's doing to his women. He's given lectures on it, come on. Now, we must keep in mind that you cannot take another person's humanity without first sacrificing your own. The letter of Willie Lynch is supposed to be a transcript of a speech given by a slave trader. Uh, it might be a hoax, but that's okay. They believe that the black woman is magic. Later, Bishop obviously disrespects black women. His own black women. He disrespects his own black women, although most of his black women are light-skinned. No shade for me. I am obviously light-skinned. But Bishop certainly has a type, huh? The type of light workers that Bishop most resonated with seem to be really hot, young, light-skinned black women in their 20s. These hot light-skinned women in their 20s seem to be the most spiritually awakened of the light workers. I don't know what it is. They're just so spiritually awakened. There must be a direct correlation between hotness and enlightenment. Direct. Way to fight Babylon, huh? In fact, if you go to his YouTube, you see that the videos with the most views are these young, attractive black people bathing in streams because people are kind of hoping secretly that they're going to see a melanated booby. Ooh, melanated booby. Now, recently has started preaching that the white people have a place of their own in this world. White people do have a place in this world. They won't be wiped out by karma. White people are here to be in the military and to defend black people. Black people are overrepresented in the US military. <laughs> but let's not let facts get in the way of his sermon. Come on, yeah. There are more black people proportionately than our numbers in the US military, so let's just leave it at that. These white people, they will escape their karmic punishment so long as they listen to Bishop and do everything he tells them to do. Why doesn't Bishop tell them to let him out of prison? I don't know. There are limits to what a god can do, I guess. Let's stop and appreciate the irony that Bishop's judge here is a black woman, and most of his judges seem to be black. There is one white person in this whole video, and they have an Armenian name. Eligio, maybe it's you. Maybe you're the problem. Bishop preached that the body will heal itself. Don't take medicines or watch TV. Eat fruit and get rest. Demons will come out of your body if you are in a tropical environment because the demons were just chilling in there, okay? So you get to the sun, you get to the tropics, and they just leave. Now, this belief did not work for one particular member of Carbon Nation who actually listened to him and stopped taking her heart medication. She was dead shortly after. Carbon Nation believes in not taking showers. It will wash away your immunity. Now, Spirit Airline obviously disagrees. I didn't even know Spirit Airline had rules until I saw this video. They believe that money is slavery, that banks own you. I'll have to do another video on this one because it's not not true, but it's not hidden either. A lot of people, when they realize how nuts the financial system is, they kind of lose it because they're like, I'm trapped in this financial system. And it's like, yeah, we're all trapped in the financial system. And con artists use this little bit of knowledge to manipulate people. So it's not not true, but it's not true, true. So whatever. Carbonation also preaches about chemtrails, fluoride in the water. This is standard conspiracy fare. Now here's an interesting one. They preach that humans are an infection. Oh, oh great mother God has put this Your virus humanity has become to be to rest. Wash it away with your divine waters and purify the earth from your furious fires. That's kind of scary because that's a hop, skip, and a jump to mass suicide. Meat eating, he says, is cannibalism. This is very extreme. There are vegans, but to say that meat eating is cannibalism is, is really defining your own species very broadly. It's not what cannibalism means. He says that we can get all of our nutrients from the sun and from fruit. They also practice astrology. Astrology is a pillar of their teaching. It's right up there with quantum physics and biology. All equal. Carbonation believes in the principles of Mayat or 
Maat, as you may know her. Mayat was the governing principle of the universe according to ancient Egyptian theology. So it's kind of like the logos. We discussed it briefly, briefly before. I'm going to make a whole video on it because it's too in-depth to explain in this video, which is already getting pretty long. Now, Carbon Nation proudly calls themselves a cult. They'll say, they'll say, well, what is a cult? Nations are cults. Businesses are cults. Bishop defines any group as a cult. This is a play on words. Cult versus culture. A cult is a culture gone malignant. It's a sliding scale. A culture gone wrong, that's a cult. Group dynamics gone wrong, that's a cult. Here's the difference between a cult and culture. The leaders of a culture, they wear the crown temporarily. Canada is a cult. No, Canada is a nation that follows laws and they elect a leader to represent them for a short period of time. Carbon Nation is represented by Eligio Bishop. It is a cult of personality around bishop. He goes away, carbon nation goes away. Church leaders, in contrast, preach the word of Christ. You'll get a different pastor for the same church. Over the years, one pastor will go, another will come. The same thing with imams and the Quran, the same thing with rabbis and the Torah. It's the process that wins out. It's the laws that win out and not the individual. And that's one of the reasons why carbon nation is not thriving right now. Also, they believe that nature boy is God. Bishop had the charisma and the intelligence to do great things, but his ego got in the way. Some people really cannot handle power. Three weeks ago, he said that women should not have equal rights to man because she is physically weaker. So a gorilla is stronger than me too. It doesn't mean a gorilla should vote and I shouldn't. Think about this. Now, here's some next level bullshit. Bishop preaches that now in modern America, the black woman doesn't need the black man because she has a different man in her life. And that man is money. And we see a picture of the white man on the money. So the new protector in a black woman's life is the white man because he's on the money. Does this make sense? This sounds like a real critique of capitalism, except it's not. It only works for a handful of strong men. It only works for warlords, this line of thinking. Money is an equalizing force. We can all have it. But of course, Bishop makes his followers give him his money. But everyone else, we all get money. See, this is the sleight of hand talk I'm talking about. The goal of the cult leader is to convince the members to give up their power. Money and industry has broken women out of bondage. We see it all over the world now in these third world countries when women can actually start a business, then they are free of their husbands. They don't just have to bear children to work the farm. That's the good thing about money. It's very light. It doesn't weigh very much. We can pick it up just fine. We don't need a man to help us. Bishop even says that he only deals with women who acknowledge his power and see him as the government. He doesn't want to change the power dynamics. He wants to be on top of the power dynamics. Now, this is from his one of his later sermons coming out of prison. So I feel that his audience is really just his pride, the people who were left. And he has to convince them to stay with him by belittling them. Now, this is pimp reasoning. This is mental carnival tricks. How do I convince them to give me what matters? How do I convince these free women to stick by me even though I'm in prison? This brings me to Bishop's most recent turn, his, his final form, his full evil, the psychology of a pimp. He brags about being a pimp. He says that most polygamists are pimps. To me, this video was the villain bragging about his evil deeds because he wants credit for it. Do you know what I mean? In the movies, the villain always has to brag. He can't just kill the hero, he has to brag first. Now, a lot of people in the comments were criticizing the interviewers on the Psychology of a Pimp video. They were saying, how can you just let this man say these things? This is disgusting. And these two gentlemen who are interviewing him, they just let him speak. Now, I'm kind of gonna defend them here because think about this. This is something that my old journalism professor used to say to me. He said, if you give a man enough rope, he'll hang himself. So if they had pushed back, maybe Bishop would have been more self-conscious and he wouldn't have opened up to how he really thinks and the game he's really playing. So those two gentlemen, I'll put this on the screen, a picture of them on the screen. And I actually think they did a really good job interviewing him because what they're supposed to do is not to check him. It's not to influence him in any way. It's just to get the truth out. And his truth, Bishop, Bishop's truth, is that he's breaking his women like a slave master breaks their slaves, like a pimp. That's his truth. 
Maybe, maybe in a personal conversation, a one-on-one conversation, if someone came up to you and started speaking that way about women, about this, this, and that, then you could say, look, you're wrong. You're wrong for this reason, or I don't agree with you, or man, you goofy. <laughs> like I would just be like, you're goofy. It doesn't make any sense. In an interview, an interview for history, for posterity's sake, it's actually good to just let them speak and let them get these horrific thoughts off their chest. So to me, for beliefs, Carbonation gets half credit. What they're saying isn't so original. He does add that melanin is magic and it equates to IQ and spirituality. But this was also common from memes in the 2010s where he came out of. Black Lives Matter popped up around then too. Also, we noticed that Bishop is melanated. So maybe this is just another way to express his narcissism. I feel, I honestly feel that Bishop's most important teaching is the psychology of a pimp where he is actually honest and he articulates what he is doing to break these women and how he feels that he has the right to break these women because he is more powerful, like the slave masters used to do. Okay, so half credit. Moving on, means of control, brainwashing. First and foremost, we see the change in language. We talk about language a lot on this channel and how it builds our internal mental world structure. Um, Check out that video on the Black Iron Prison, the Black Iron Palace, if you're not familiar with how important language is in our minds. Inside of our minds, language is very important. So already, by changing language, threes instead of E's, self, C-E-L-L-F, instead of self, S-E-L-F, Babylon mother, instead of mom, mom, Bishop was able to control the behavior of those around him and to control their thoughts in a way, their thought processes in a way. Watch these talking points, these slogans, these useless cliches. Slogans are the actual code that is used to program humans. Talking points are similar. There seems to be a knee-jerk reaction to repeat a certain talking point when one of these influenced people hears a trigger word. Trigger, talking point. Trigger, talking point. It's like pong, mental pong inside their head. One trigger word for carbonation was cult. Yes, we're a cult. Every nation is a cult. Every business is a cult. Well, we already addressed this. They're not all cults. But you can't spell culture without cult, right? Right? Oh, so then it's true, right? Okay, no. No, it's not. It's a scale, okay? This is all on a scale. Modern society is scary insane. Modern society is unpredictable. I'm not even going to lie right now. It's 2022 and we are hopefully at the craziest point we'll ever be at. And a lot of that is to do with the internet and social media and technology. We discuss this a lot. Uncertainty is through the roof. What is going to happen? Will there be an economy in five years? Are the Russians going to nuke us? That kind of chaos really helps the con man recruit. Con men means confidence man, someone who instills confidence. Bishop started preaching confidently in a time of great uncertainty. So he's giving out confidence and we're all looking for confidence. But this is the rub. There's no, there's no certainty now. Great social uncertainty, great political uncertainty, great economic uncertainty, all of these things feed people who promise you answers and there's no answers plus there's the pandemic this also happened to happen during a pandemic things were half shut down they got arrested in hawaii for breaking quarantine everybody had less options everybody over the whole world had less options bishop taught that his chosen people would be protected they'd be protected from covid they'd be protected from the side effects from the vaccine this is a fear tactic Really, his followers were young and thin, and so they weren't really at risk from COVID. He said, look, you're fine, you're okay. Didn't I help you? He didn't do anything. Once again, taking credit for natural processes. We see his message of love for the black woman morphing into control of the black woman. Like most abusers, he hides his control with, I just love you so much. I just love you so much, I have to control you. He love bombs them initially. When they first get there, he flatters them, he spoils them. Then they become dependent on that affection. His wife got pregnant. As soon as she got pregnant, she said that he started abusing her. And plus in group dynamics, when we have a cult of personality, your ranking within the group depends on how the leader feels about you. So they all had to please Elysio. We even see the very teachings themselves. We see them morph into mind control. 
Women are weaker. Women must be protected. Women exist to take care of my body. He said this from prison. These are actual words from his prison tapes that are on his YouTube. Women exist to take care of my body, he says. All right, fine. Just keep in mind for young women, there is no greater trap than being with a child. The child is the biggest trap in the world. I don't want to go into it now, but a mother's love is literally everything. And so when he got these women pregnant, he really limited their options. Now, his first wife, Velvet, she was able to leave. She took her daughter and she left and she has made a better life for herself. But not all of them were able to do that. It's really hard to go against the group. It's really hard to go against everything you know. And the group itself kept other members in line. Remember, they did a similar thing in Heaven's Gate with the buddy system. You're not allowed to leave the room outside of three. You know the laws of our house. Our house is we move in threes. You don't move by yourself. Bishop separated followers from their families. Birth mothers were called Babylon mothers. And he asked their followers to separate from their Babylon family. Kayla Reed, for example, he renamed her Sunray. That's another, that's another trick. Rename them. He even says it in The Psychology of a Pimp. He says that if he can get them to go by a different name, he has that control over them. A lot of groups, a lot of groups, whether it's gangs, whether it's online groups, whether it's whatever, then they have ownership of you. Just like your family has some ownership of you by you going by their name. What, whatever last name you take, whatever first name you take, that signifies you're a member of that family. Now, he takes their name, we went over this with Heaven's Gate, renames them, has new ownership over them. They're kind of reborn into carbon nation. Okay, the music. The music has a positive message. Yes, they're in a cult and the leader is in prison for rape and false imprisonment, but that doesn't mean he produced WAP. At least he didn't produce WAP, right? This positive message actually appeals to a lot of people, especially in the crazy times that we're in right now. Our culture can be so toxic that anyone offering a message of empowerment is attractive. Music in general is good for massaging messages into people's brains. I'm gonna link this thing we did with Tony and Keenan um, with that talks about that. That's why it's so dangerous. It's kind of like the slogan programming on steroids. Bishop also uses sex to gain power over women. He has sex with a lot of his followers. If one person is sick, if one person has herpes as a human being, we all have herpes. We'll also notice that criticism of Bishop is criticism of the black man in general. See, he corrupts our basic values, like the love of tribe. Love of tribe. Of course, we love our family, love our people. In this case, we love black Americans. Well, Bishop claimed to represent all black men. So if you love black men, you love Bishop, right? Love all black men by loving Bishop. See, he clings to his followers' racial pride like a parasite. He claims to speak on behalf of all black men. Well, what about the black men he abused? Well, not those black men. Just like big, strong black men named Eligio Bishop. That black man. I know, you can't really follow the logic. To his harem, to his pride, Bishop is the black man personified. They're in a mental and emotional bubble. They, they're brainwashed. Now we're outside the bubble and we see how ridiculous it is that he is only one of millions of black men. Pew says that there's 24 million black men in America and he's, he's one of them. Now he's cute, I'm gonna give it to him, he's cute, but there are millions of cute black men in America and these dudes are not gonna make you fight for Instagram Live. Now, ironically, Bishop says that his biggest critics are black women they also happen to be his biggest targets. He says they are selling him out to the white man. This is mafia logic. This is Sopranos logic. This is how bullies and gangs intimidate people. The mafia would ruin your business, but they'd still expect your loyalty because y'all both came from the old country together, huh? SSDD. He says that women exist to feed the male ego, not the beta male ego because ew, but his ego. He is an alpha. His harem, his pride, agrees. Everything you have to offer is for me, he says. He specifies the bosom, the black woman's bosom for him. What kind of person unironically uses the word bosom? Just creepy people, it's just creeps. Someone commented under this video, someone actually commented, once the economy falls, they're gonna need a man. Someone really thought this, it's like, what is more likely? that the whole of the United States is gonna fall or that this particular man is gonna fall.
Now, the economy will ebb and flow. That's life. That happens every decade or so. I hate to say it. Even in the scariest times, so like right now, I would still bet on the economy over this one particular guy who's already broke, already in prison. Like, what is more likely, that your man is going to fail or that McDonald's is going to fail? That your man can't make it work or that Amazon can't make it work? I'm just like, what? What are you thinking? They're not. They're in a bubble. They're in a bubble. We see Bishop displaying signs of violence and cruelty. He humiliates his followers, especially when he's been humiliated. He humiliates them to show the internet that he has power that these people haven't taken his power away. I guess he can't stand the people in the live calling him such a jerk. So to lash out at them, then he humiliates these other people who are following him, who are loyal to him. Which is the worst trait that a person can have, the absolute worst trait a person can have. So his means of control, they're not so great. Most of his followers have left. They're not effective. People have seen through them. He only has a handful of followers left and those followers are broke and powerless. And most of the followers ended up leaving because Bishop became so tyrannical. So maybe if he'd been a little bit nicer, he could have held on to them. So that brings us to quality of the followers. I will say that these are some of the best looking followers I have come across in a cult. They also have interest in art, which I appreciate. Some are quite talented, especially in the music. They were members of the conscious black community. So people who were looking for something, people who knew that modernity wasn't offering everything. So they were looking for something deeper. These people had been seeing a lot of conscious black teachers online and they were primed for a man like Bishop to come out and take it to the real world, to take it off the online and bring them to an actual place. In this video by Tracy by Nature, former member Boomi describes how he was excited when he saw a man like Bishop actually want to make these things real. Not just selling merch, but wanting to make a group in real life. And it's actually a shame because Carbon Nation, Carbon Nation had a lot of really cool people come through and he had no right to abuse them, disrespect them the way he did. These are human beings. Most have left, thank goodness. Most people who fall into these new religious movements move on. They're kind of like transitory truth seekers. They go from one group to the next looking for what truth a person has. Now, here's what gets me. The Carbon Nation members aren't really on drugs other than weed, which is basically on par with coffee as far as drugs go. I don't understand how they're not on drugs. I don't get it. <laughs> the rest I can understand. Okay, so you're in a harem. You got kicked off Spirit Airlines because you smell too bad. You were fighting your love rival on a beach. Okay, we've all been there, okay? But you're not on drugs? You're doing all of this and you're not on drugs? Like... This I don't understand. If this was a movie, I would turn it off right now because I'm like, there's no way. I don't buy it. The first part, I get it. But this last part, I don't buy it. Movie goes off. But I don't really see any evidence for extensive drug use. Often these cult leaders will use drugs to make their subjects more pliable so they can manipulate them better. And I'm just not seeing it. So I, I don't know. I don't know. You got me on that one. Now, the followers haven't murdered anybody and they've only committed minor crimes. Body odor is not a crime. Silliness is not a crime. And most of those followers have left due to the increasingly controlling tendencies of Bishop. So overall, Carbonation had high quality followers. They're attractive. They're appealing to viewers. They seem friendly. Like they seem likable, like really likable people that you can relate to. The followers were not the problem here. It was never the followers. This is what gets me, is because they're also skilled. They're also helping Bishop with his YouTube page. They're also helping him advance his career. And I really hope that the ones who have left have found work. Do you know what I mean? That they're moving on and they're using the skills that they learned under Carbon Nation to advance themselves in awful Babylon. Get you your own harem of white men, ladies. Moving on to practices and rituals. I actually like many of their practices, such as dancing and making music, artistic things. They tend to tune us into a more spiritual aspect of ourselves. Now, Carbonation could have made much better art if they were a little bit more self-critical, or maybe if they took more drugs, you know what I mean? 
the process of making art, even if it's not the best art, is really good at delving into ourselves. So I like this practice. You can just tell they didn't have to eat by their talent. You know what I mean? They weren't depending on their talent to pay the bills because that would be different. The group seems to have bonded through music video production. I'm counting this because their YouTube was to spread their message. It wasn't an incidental business like Heaven's Gate with their web development company. The YouTube for Carbonation is directly intertwined with the cult itself. Now, I'm not going to mock modernity because we have the potential for greater things than any time in the past. However, maintaining a YouTube page does not have the same ritual status as, say, a Latin mass. Okay? The Latin mass is the dopest ritual there is. Okay? There's magic there. What are they saying? I don't know. What are you guys doing? How are you traipsing across Central America and you're not having ayahuasca ceremonies every night? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I'm going to give them half credit at best. Now, they did not believe in toilets, instead choosing to defecate at the base of a tree. So technically, every number two they had is an offering to nature. This free love thing seems to have been a thing earlier in the group. It seems as though talented young men were lured with the implication of sex with beautiful women. Manson did the same thing. There seems to have been STIs traded between members. Former members went public and Bishop Slut shamed them. Of course, Bishop Slut shamed them. It's free love until you piss them off. And then you're a slut. It's part of the sexual exploitation power dynamic. It's a major red flag with people. It's free love, we all love each other. Oh, until you piss a bishop off and then you're a slut. Until you leave and you're a heretic, then you're a slut, okay? So points off for lame rituals and no drugs. Final, our final category, the charismatic leader. Eligio Lee Bishop, Nature Boy, Three God. The black man is God! 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 Give him more power, black man! Now here's the rub, because he had fantastic potential. In the early 2010s, a casting agent would love him. Attractive, black male, questioning his sexuality. Hollywood would have cast him to be the sympathetic character in just about anything. Someone we want to like. But he's turned himself into a villain. Ego, pride, vanity. You see, watch, watch him pose. Watch him pose in a lot of these things, like he's a model. Bishop is not a dumb guy, either. Many of his sermons are engaging. He repeats what he hears online in the sort of new age conspiracy infosphere, and he's very good at latching on to good ideas. However, he's a scoundrel. Bishop is a scoundrel, an abuser, a narcissist. And worst of all, worst of all, he's bad at producing music, which led his followers into humiliation in Atlanta. So riddle me this. He says he's God, but he can't get into the clubs in Atlanta. Like, do you think the club would let you in if you could turn a bottle of Dasani into a bottle of Dom Perignon? Like, you'd get into all the clubs. But it's really a shame with Bishop because his hubris is not allowing him to fulfill his spiritual potential. He's descended into ego, to manipulation, into being a basic influencer. Can you imagine what Jesus's thumbnails would look like? Like, do you think Jesus would stop healing lepers if they didn't get the views? Like, he'd stop posting videos of himself healing lepers because there's no views? Bishop stopped channeling when that video didn't get the views. Imagine if the Prophet Muhammad had some revelations, but they weren't popular, so he just stopped. He's like, you know what? Just forget about all this revelation stuff. My channel is about camel grooming now, guys. Like, do you believe you're a prophet or not? Do you believe you're God or not? I don't think Bishop believes any of this stuff. So I'm kind of torn here. I'm not sure if Bishop should get full credit because of the great casting or no credit at all because he squandered everything. What do you give an A student that doesn't show up for the second half of the semester? An F. You give him an F. That's only fair. What is the bigger sin? To have no potential or to ruin the potential you have? Now, me personally, because I'm here for the entertainment, I kind of like this villain turn. I mean, the gods will punish him for his hubris, of course. But for our maximum entertainment... This is fantastic. Bishop seems to have decided to emulate the Babylon model that he'd railed against for so long. He had plateaued in this nature thing. Maybe it wasn't getting the clicks it used to get. Maybe he just moved past it. Plus, he'd been kicked out of all the cool nature places. So he moves to Atlanta and went full Babylon. Like, think about it. Why does a god even want to get into a club? Like, the ladies, ladies, you must be there thinking, why does a god want to get to a club? 
And also, the United States might be Babylon, but there's plenty of nature in Babylon too. He could have built a little farming community away from everyone else, and the police wouldn't have bothered him. Hmm. Like if he really wanted to be in nature in the United States, he could have done that. He didn't want to. He wanted to go live in a swanky Airbnb. There are plenty of communities in America where people are living by the soil. So overall, how does carbonation stack up? I'm gonna give carbonation three goat heads out of five. Three goat heads out of five. Great potential, but they got in their own way. Luckily, this all happened over the span of about seven years, so everyone can pick up the pieces and move on. No one died except that one lady, which was really unfortunate. We all need to choose the toxic friend groups that best reflect our fitness level. This lady needed a toxic book club, not some naturalist cult in Costa Rica or wherever. This is not her fault. She was brainwashed. I'm not gonna put all of the blame on her, but like when you need medicine, don't join a cult that believes in no medicine. Yo, that's like a healthy person joining a no air cult. What are we talking about here? The members seem to have gotten a lot of practice in video production and Photoshop. They really should parlay that into a new media career. Dump Nature Boy, he's not God. You can go to the same videos and read the same books that Nature Boy got all his teachings from. You don't need him to be the in-between for you and your higher self. This is nonsense. Rebrand, guys. Rebrand with a new YouTube. Something like a coming clean, nature of man, beware of false prophets, you know what I mean? Get a good logo at the front. Use those same skills that you use to prop up Nature Boy, to prop yourselves up. The content, it can be about spirituality, about music, about culture. Put an album out, a good album. I really just hope that the members of Carbon Nation can just move on from this embarrassing time in their lives. Like our parents' generation joined cults, but all of their worst moments weren't broadcast on Instagram Live. You know what I mean? Like, it's unfortunate that they happen to have been in a cult in this time. Okay, so you're saying, what are the chances that Nature Boy actually is God? Well, let's check the Christometer real quick. Da -da -da -da. One in eight billion. A statistical roll of the dice, assuming that God is walking amongst us right now. Now, I can say with such confidence that Nature Boy is not God because I know, I know in my heart, Jesus Christ would never ever say something like, control yourself before you get rolled out or shut the f up, bitch. Like, is that in the red letter Bible? That's why you got smacked. Fuck wrong with y'all, nigga. So say it the Lord, like one in eight billion. Maybe he's God. Maybe we're all God and we don't know it. I might actually have to do a follow-up when this is all over. The group has become more isolated and more toxic. They have less money than they did before. They got kicked out of their Airbnb. They're staying with one of the, at one of the members' house now. So the stresses are higher. We'll just say this. Now, hopefully these people see the light and move on. Fingers crossed, we are all praying for them. Now you say, Maya, give me some good news. This icky man has left a bad taste in my mouth. You know I don't disappoint. Bishop's ex-wife has left him. He took her money, her passport, her birth certificate. He impregnated her. She tried to leave many times, but on the fourth time she was successful. She took her daughter and she moved on. She broke free of the mind trap, okay? She has her own YouTube now, a safe environment for her daughter, and she has a man who respects her. Win! We end this on a win. Subscribe.